next presentation uh, on a different topic looks at accelerated partial breast brachytherapy. Um, for patients who are diagnosed with an early stage invasive breast cancer, studies have shown long-term survival is very similar for individuals who undergo a mastectomy versus those, versus those who have lumpectomy plus radiation. And standard radiation is delivered over six to seven weeks. It's a Monday through Friday therapy for women. Some newer techniques have been developed in the last few years that look at delivering radiation in a shorter period of time into a lower volume of breast tissue. And so here today to discuss his group's work looking at brachytherapy is Dr. Benjamin Smith, an assistant professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Thank you, Dr. Ligabell, and I'd like to thank the organizers of this meeting for inviting us to present our results this morning. I also would like to disclose that our research group has received some funding from Varian Medical Systems, although that funding was not used for this study. I have no other financial disclosures to report. <clears throat> so as Dr. Ligabell mentioned, whole breast irradiation is widely regarded as the standard of care following lumpectomy for early invasive breast cancer. With whole breast irradiation, the entire affected breast is treated with radiation. Extensive data from clinical trials and meta-analyses has demonstrated convincingly that whole breast irradiation lowers the risk of cancer recurrence in the breast. As a result, it also optimizes the long-term likelihood that a woman will be able to preserve her breast, and it is generally regarded to have a favorable toxicity profile. However, whole breast irradiation does have its limitations. <coughs> Principally, it entails three to seven weeks of daily radiation treatment Monday through Friday. And so some patients may choose a mastectomy over lumpectomy followed by radiation simply due to the convenience of having one surgical procedure rather than one surgical procedure followed by up to seven weeks of radiation treatments. And specifically for patients who live in rural areas, the whole breast radiation treatment schedules can pose a hardship if they have to travel extended distances to a radiation therapy treatment center. Partial breast irradiation has been developed to try to address some of the limitations of whole breast irradiation. It entails delivery of radiation to breast tissue that is immediately adjacent to the lumpectomy cavity. It can be delivered with brachytherapy, which entails placing a radioactive seed within the breast or external beam radiation techniques. With partial breast irradiation, the, radi the radiation treatment schedule is shortened to just one week of treatment. And as a result, it's thought that partial breast irradiation may improve patient access and compliance with radiation therapy. However, partial breast irradiation has its limitations as well. Specifically, there is little long-term follow-up data from comparative studies evaluating the relative safety and effectiveness of partial breast irradiation to whole breast irradiation. It is possible that due to the smaller volume of tissue irradiated with partial breast irradiation, there could be a higher risk of breast cancer recurrence in some patients. In addition, the invasive nature of brachytherapy, which requires surgical placement of a catheter within the breast, could yield an increased likelihood of post-procedural complications. Finally, the more intense radiation dosing schedules used with the just one week of partial breast irradiation could potentially lead to an increase in radiation-related side effects. So with that background in mind, our group found itself in possession of a very interesting data set. We're in the possession of national Medicare data that encompasses the Medicare claims for all female patients diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States from 2000 through 2007. And we have 123,000 women who are treated with lumpectomy followed by whole breast irradiation, and 7,000 women treated with lumpectomy followed by brachytherapy. And so using this data set, we sought to compare brachytherapy and whole breast irradiation with respect to their effectiveness, which we assessed that using the surrogate of a mastectomy uh, being performed after radiation, postoperative complications, and post-radiation complications. And this is what we found. Through five years, we found that women treated with brachytherapy experienced a higher risk of having a mastectomy. Specifically, at the five-year mark, 4% of the women treated with brachytherapy were subsequently underwent a mastectomy, compared to 2% in patients treated with whole breast irradiation. In a multivariate model, we found that patients treated with brachytherapy experienced a two-fold increased risk of subsequent mastectomy compared to patients treated with whole breast irradiation. 
and when we adjusted for various clinical factors and socio-demographic factors, to our surprise, brachytherapy was the variable that had the strongest correlation with the risk of subsequent mastectomy. Uh, with regard to post-operative complications, we found that 16% of patients treated with brachytherapy compared to 10% of patients treated with whole breast irradiation had a code for an infection of the breast or surrounding skin or soft tissues within one year of diagnosis. We also found that 16% of patients treated with brachytherapy compared to 8% of patients treated with whole breast irradiation had a code for a non-infectious complication such as a surgical wound breakdown, post-operative bleeding, or formation of a seroma, which is a fluid-filled cavity within the breast. In multivariate logistic modeling, we found that patients treated with brachytherapy experienced roughly twice the odds of developing either one of these outcomes when compared to patients treated with whole breast irradiation. Finally, we examined complications occurring after the start of radiation therapy and within five years of radiation therapy. And we found that patients treated with brachytherapy were more likely to have a diagnosis code for breast pain after the start of radiation therapy than patients treated with whole breast irradiation, 15% versus 12%. We also found that patients treated with brachytherapy were more likely to have a diagnosis of fat necrosis, 9% versus 4%. Fat necrosis may not have much clinical significance, but is generally considered a marker of tissue injury from either surgery and or radiation therapy. There, there were very slight differences in the risk of rib fracture between the two cohorts, and I'm not certain that that is a, a real or a, a very robust finding. And in contrast, we found that patients treated with whole breast irradiation had a slightly higher risk of radiation pneumonitis at 0.8% versus 0.1% in patients treated with brachytherapy. This study has several important limitations to consider. Principally, it is a non-randomized observational study, and thus subtle confounders could be impacting some of our findings. In addition, we have limited data regarding tumor characteristics, and therefore we cannot rule out that there might be a subgroup of patients who would experience equivalent results with whole breast irradiation and brachytherapy. We also have limited follow-up with a median of approximately 3.5 years. Finally, it's very important to note that our data do not uh, apply to all partial breast irradiation techniques. There are several different techniques for delivering partial breast irradiation with external beam approaches, and those approaches cannot be rigorously evaluated using claims data. In addition, there are other important outcomes that may not generate a claim or a medical encounter in the treatment of breast cancer. One of these outcomes would be the aesthetic outcome of the breast after breast conserving therapy, and our study cannot assess the relative differences in the aesthetic outcome between these two radiation approaches. In conclusion, from 2000 through 2007, older women in the United States treated with brachytherapy experienced higher risks of losing the breast, post-operative infection, post-operative wound complications, breast pain, and fat necrosis. Our findings highlight the complex um, choices that patients have to make with their doctors when choosing between two different radiation treatment strategies. I'd like to thank our group, uh, my division head, Dr. Buckholz, who is a paper on this pro uh, author on this project and sitting in the audience, and the rest of our team who's worked very hard on it.